Thank you. Good morning. You may have a seat. It is please. It is a pleasure for me to greet you this morning. Like as always, always a privilege for me to share the word with you, and work hand by hand with pastors David and Madeline, whom have a vision of what they have, of what they want you to learn and know, and that we may continue to grow in God's word each day. I see some new faces, some faces that spring back up from were absent for a few moments. I know there's a difficult moments. I am well aware of what's going on in the industry. And I know it's very difficult for a lot of families. And let's continue praying um, on our feet and our knees, however it may be, so things may be better. That many families can have those benefits in which they have arrived in this, to this country. Those that are new, thank, uh, welcome. I've never seen you. If you can look behind you or to the side, give a, say hello to that person that has been here today that expects to receive something from God. We will be talking about, well, as I mentioned, a pastor's vision. We'll be talking about independence and freedom by the independence they hear here in the United States, speaking of the independence, um, it is the 4th of July is the independence day here in the U.S., in Venezuela is the 5th, Colombia is July 20th, and Mexico is in September 16th, and et cetera. At least that's as much as I know. Not only that, but it's also a day of work. It's a day of, labor, of rest, sorry, from work, for those of you that labored. It is also good for us to be able I started thinking about what is independence? What is freedom? Those are two concepts that are similar, very, they look alike, but ha each one of us has their own, but each one of them is different. What we're going to do today is going to lay a foundation, and Pastor David is going to continue to delve a little deeper into these concepts, you know, the next four or five more Sundays, and we will finish by finding what is the true freedom as, as Christians. What is that freedom? What independence? As believers in Jesus. Why? Because it is a different way than what the independence looks like as we know it. Or the freedom as we know it. What is independence? And what is freedom? When I was working for this word, I was like, woof! I don't know much of this in a very profound way this concept but I know that when I'm going to look for this when I find this as we say in Colombia I'm going to find this a little a little problem I'm going to be pulling my hair in other words it's not only following one aspect but it follows it has a lot of different aspects here so let's say each one of those aspects are important important to answer one question which is that's what I want us to think about and that question is, are we truly independent and freely? It's how independent are we? Or how free are we? I know this is a question. Well, when pastor asked me that question, it is, it's a little bit, a confrontational type but it's also it helped me think or come to a realization of something in hope am I truly free or what am I a slave to or what am I a slave into are we 100% free am I 100% independent or what do I depend on what thing what people what situation am I depending on hmm well yeah As social media says, I am self-sufficient. I'm a woman who's self-sufficient. I'm a fighter. But can I really uh, reach that 100% this freedom, this independence, sorry. Can I really reach 100% freedom? Because we all were born free. God made us free. And we hear those songs. 
you know, and we hear, I'm frozen. And we hear that we are actually free. But how free are we in reality? I'm going to start by defining these two concepts with a dictionary definition. When we find this dictionary, what does this say? I say, what is this in independence? What is what is definition? So is it a quality or a condition of independence? So what is independence? Well, to have independence. So you're in the same. Quality of independence. So what is independence? That doesn't depend on another. It's autonomous. It has its own rights. It has its own rights and opinions. A second, a second um, definition, because it says freedom. It says, um, so it's freedom. I mean, one aspect shows that, talks about aspect and freedom. And a third definition says, in firmness of character. Uh, I kind of understood that one a little with that definition. That possibility that a person has or takes responsibility in its own character, in its own life, in its own character. Independence, we can say there's several, but the most common ones are emotional independence and personal, in the political independence. It's what we celebrate in our countries. The economical independence, it's another type. Another way. When I went to look for the definition of free, I was stuck. I got stuck. It was a more wider, broader definition. But I'm going to stay with the ones that I think I'm going to work better in this case. It's just a way that man has, you know, that a man may have as a responsible way according to his actions. A state or condition of what you are not a slave of. That's also interesting. A state of being of where you are not in prison and real. And the fourth one is lack of being subjected to something or someone. And there I found a different types of freedoms. A freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of spiritual, freedom of spiritual, freedom, etc., 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 I think that we can stay here, the, you know, but what we want to go with these two definitions is that this is to show you how broad these two concepts are and how each one of them aspects can influence our own independence and our own freedom as people, as individual, as humans, also as children of God. These aspects can also can be influenced or could be crossed with through other aspects, like for instance, age. The vital stage of where we're at. It's not the same a child, the independence of a child, to the independence of an adult. Or an adolescent to an adult. There are things where there's some independence and some freedoms are a little bit compromised. Also depends on the politics that are in our countries. Uh, economical conditions, socio-economical cultures, also are f makes our independence or freedom to be compromised. Also, gender. And I'm not going to get into this theme, but I know it gives more. But gender can also determine how independent or how free you are, a person can be, if it's a man or a woman. And that's also connected a lot to social culture. I saw a lot to look into, but I'm not going to depth into that. There's a lot of aspects that influence that we can be truly independent and free as people. So what is the difference between these two concepts? Freedom is something that is given to us as like a gift. Something that was given to us, a gift that was given to us. God created us with the faculty to be free to have free will. Have you heard of that? To have free will? What does that mean? 
it's the ability to choose what to do and how to do it. And that allow us to freedom allows us to have our own will. I do what I want to do. I don't want I don't do what I don't want to do. I'm I'm free to say I want to do this because I want to or I want to do it because I don't want to do it. When you're not free, you don't have the possibility. You do as you're told. On the other side, independence is more linked to the autonomy. What does that mean? To the resources, I have to act the way I want to act or do what I want to do. It can also be conditioned to both internal or external factors. Let me give you an example. Because this is more up in the air, the difference. An example. I'm free to decide if I want to be a professional, if I want to study, or obtain a degree. But my freedom to do so may be conditioned by my capacity or for independence. What does that mean? Am I old enough to work to be able to pay for my studies? Should I ask, do I have the ability to go to a bank to get a loan? Should I ask my parents for financial help? And if my parents help me, will I be subject to the conditions they impose on me? Uh, will I be conditioned to this, which this conditions are going to be imposed on me? I am free to do so, but, you know, I can do that. I'm given the freedom to do it. But how independent am I? Am I to be able to reach this goal? What do I depend on? I might depend on my parents. I'm going to depend on a job, a bank who could help me, give me the loan so that I can do it. Will I have enough time to dedicate it? I have children, for example. I won't be able to enough time to do this. So the independence starts being seen as something that's being compromised. And the freedom is also being um, seen a little bit compromised because of this independence that could be denied to me. As humans, we are free. God made us free. But our freedom can be compromised, but our capacity capacity of independent and autonomy of it. But if we go deeper on this, since we were in gestation, you know, in our mother's womb, we are, we were, had that condition to be able to survive. You weren't here because, because you want to. First, because you were being fed and developed through your mom's womb. It came through several different series of people helping you to get you the condition where you're at. And that is the question is, are we really independent? Then why do we question this reality? Up to what degree am I dependent in my life? As I told you earlier, what are we dependent on? When we're children, we depend 100% of our caregivers or parents. <laughs> that has no... There's no argument in there. In our adolescence, we probably acquire some sort of independence. We can. We go to school alone. Our parents, we can ride a bus. You know, parents let us go a certain place without them. But, but still, we depend directly on them, especially in the, in the financial aspect because we can't work. We can't have an income for ourselves. Let's say that we are reaching a certain degree of dependent of independence and as adults. And I say a certain degree because because there are situations in which we depend on others. And that we are mature or big or have the age that we may have doesn't mean that we are independent and free people. For example, there's children that still, that live under their parents' 
rules, even though they're older, and they can support themselves, but their parents still tell them what they have to do. Whether they live with them or not. If they live with them, that's a story. Even those that don't live with their parents and still their parents make decisions for them. But then there's also another extreme. Parents have lost their role as parents. And it's their children now that tell them with their parents what to do. And then make decisions for them. And they including the control of their finances and other types of situations. People, adults, subjected by their spouse, both emotionally or financially, or even by other people. Things that can lead even to abuse and violence. Another question, a question, one, a difficult one. How much freedom is there in marriage when we are married to someone? We have a relationship with another how independent are we? How free are we to make decisions without taking that other person in consideration? Is it possible to reach 100% freedom or independence when there's someone else in my life that who I decided to share with? This question is, you know, run in my mind. We can say that we are independent in some aspects but dependence in others and there is the question is are we 100% independent I think that it is difficult to reach that state of independence where I can say I don't count with anyone I don't need anyone I don't have to give any or no report to anyone can you be reached you possibly can but it's not happy. To, it's not easy to do that. So if we do an introspection of ourselves and analyze our own life, I'm sure we can identify where am I independent and where am I dependent on others. Now, on the other hand, what are we a slave of? What are you talking about? The slavery was abolished a while ago. That doesn't exist. Well, let's see. Sometimes we are slaves of our own thoughts, our limited thoughts, our attachments, ideologies, paradigms that we have built over the years. Ideas that may have been imposed to us, society, family, friends, our close, our circle, but also ideas that we have brought upon ourselves. They've started to build up in our lives. People who've heard, you're good for nothing. And in their head, he's a good for nothing. And it's slave to that idea that was imposed on him. And hasn't been able to reach anything because he was told that he was good for nothing. A lot of us, and I include myself, we are slaves of fear, and that fear will not let us go or doesn't let us explore other options, do other things. Or another aspect of our personality that limit us, limits us from doing things freely. Others are slaves to some sin and find themselves stumbling over and over again with the same stone. And even though we pray because we're not too far from that happening. We say, Lord, I don't want to continue doing this. I don't want to continue to do this other thing. Please help me. One way or another, we repeat it. We find ourselves repeating. We see ourselves repeating doing every time when we ask, even though we ask God a lot to help us overcome this. Some of us are slaves of hatred and resentment have not been able to forgive something done. They haven't been able to forgive something done of them in the past, and they continue to be there. And there's nothing that can slave you more than hatred. Overall, because I'm not sure if you heard that. 
I don't know if you've heard this saying that says that hatred is a poison that one ingests, hoping the other person dies. Could be that the other person may have repented from what he did and may be living a happy life while you continue to start feeding that feeling, that emotion, and living a, a bitter life because someone else that possibly may have repented from doing what he did and now there, there's a slave that's very clear. It's where I'm tied to a feeling that's already been rooted in my heart and it has been slaving me and keeping me from going forward. Others are slaves to a vice. Something they do repeatedly that hurts them, that may hurt them physically or emotionally, but they continue to do it. The substance game who knows other a lot of vices that can be there which we can become slaves to so i come in as a question again, are we truly free let's read the word galatians 5 verses 1 through 13 There's several aspects here, but I'm going to focus more on the first and on the last on the first and the last two verses. But we're going to read this this whole portion. And it says The title of this portion is Freedom in Christ. Stand fast therefore in liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I Paul say unto you that if you be circumcised Christ shall profit you nothing for I for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law Christ is become of no effect unto you whosoever of you are justified by the law ye are fallen from grace for we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith for in Jesus Christ neither neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion comes not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence if you, in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. For, brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. <laughs> for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of other of another. Paul Oh Paulo. Pablo Paul is a oh, complex. But he is talking to us here. There is a law that requires fulfillment. But he insists he said it several times. Jesus has freed us. He called us to be free. You, my brethren, have been called to be freedom. 
So why do we continue slave of the same bondage that we have imposed ourselves or the bondages that others have continued to give us? And I like more where it says don't use that freedom to satisfy the desires of the flesh, but use this freedom to help each other, one another with love. So freedom isn't good if we don't have a good use of it. But we have also found cases where because I'm free, I can take advantage of you. I can surpass your limits. And I've heard that. My my rights end where the other ones start. Where the other's rights start. And we can't let that happen because what we do, because when we do that, we take advantage of that, we are trespassing that freedom. Or we're taking advantage of that freedom that we are, that is given to us and we want to do as we want. And that's when we have to be careful. We are free, yes. Yeah, we are. Christ has li freed us. Of course we're free. But also I have to keep in mind that there's others. And I cannot violate the freedom of others. I can't trespass someone else's limits. More than just it, more than just being independent. It is great to be independent. I don't want to depend on anyone else to do what I want to do what I want to do. It is sad to say, I have to ask permission to go out to drink coffee, to go for a walk. Oh, I can't. I have to ask for permission. Who, whomever it may be. But in my situation, yeah. Having independence is very free. I mean, having independence is great and it's nice, but having it 100 percent, it's not possible. But besides having a more independence, we should seek an interindependence, which is another concept that tells us that we are not alone. We need others to subsist because that dependence. Because if I go to the definition, it says that. It doesn't depend on others. That is autonomous. That doesn't allow any outside intervention. Can we really do that? Make decisions without having to think of others before making a decision. If we have children, our decision is based on what's going around with our children or could affect our children. If we have a person, we have to think about our spouse before making a decision. So that dependence that independence still is being questioned. But if I find an interindependence where I understand that I'm not alone, that I need others to be able to subsist, truly then I will reach that what I need. Through deep relationships, we can complement our weaknesses with the strengths of others. As the Queen Columbian says, the same way going the wrong way. With my strength, I can help the weakness of others. And that's like an interindependence because I depend on others and the other depends on me. We both can reach that ob that goal. It's like a win-win. I must accept that I cannot go at it alone and although I am free and God made me free, I will just be conditioned to the law and other aspects to do what I want. Yes, I'm free, but I can't go. I can't run all stops. I'm breaking a law. I'm only putting other people's lives in danger and, and risking other people's lives in danger. Other pers people's lives and mine. Yes, I understand that there I am independent, but there are also norms and laws that must be followed. God made us free, but sometimes we ourselves are the ones who put that yoke on ourselves. We know that there are people laws, rules, and situations that subject us, but we have also subjected ourselves to them. We need to think of those things. What are those paradigms, those ideas, those bondage that we have placed on ourselves that have kept us from doing other things? God made us free, but we are held, we are bond by this one or another, and we don't see ourselves being able to get out of the situation. So let this be a moment 
or let it be of the beginning of us trying to think about what is keeping us bonding, binding us and what bondage has been imposed by others. A lot of times, because we don't know, our parents imposed on us that nowadays isn't right. And what do we do it? Well, that's how I was taught at home. I'm not necessarily have to say it's true. I mean, it has to be right. And I don't want you also to throw your parents under the bus. What can I free myself from? What things as a conscious adult, a responsible adult, would say, you know what? These are ideas that have me binded here. I should free myself from this because God made me free. The word is clear. In Christ we are free. He has set us free. It makes no sense to remain bound to fear, to sin, to hatred, or to our enslaving ideologies when in Christ we have freedom. Yes, and that law is important and must be fulfilled. Even Christ said that. I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. But we should not also forget who are we accountable we are accountable to a higher being. And everything on this earth will pass. But as long as we're here on this earth, we have to fulfill the the land's law. The good thing and the good news is that our hope isn't deposited into its place in eternity and not what's here on earth. Not in this place that's all bondage will be However, while we are here on earth, no matter how many obstacles we have, no matter how dependent we are, we must seek spiritual liberation, and we can only find it in the love of Christ and the love of our fellow man. Thank you.